Yes, I know I already did a playthrough of this before, but that one was terrible, so I'm doing it again. This is Clock Tower for the SNES, later given the title Clock Tower the First Fear and later ports of the game. This is a survival horror game based on the concept of slasher films. Now, I'm not normally a fan of those, but honestly, I think the concept works quite well for games. Additionally, this game is based on a film by the name of Phenomena. Uh, this includes the main character who resembles and shares a first name with the main character and actor from the film. They're all named Jennifer, and this is Jennifer Simpson. Not to be confused with Jennifer Connelly, who plays Jennifer Corvino in the film. There's no mixing those up, right? Now, I don't really know anything else about the film, other than the fact that the director is a bit weird about bugs. He really likes bugs. For reference, the girl in the back is named Laura, the girl ahead of her is named Lot, and the girl ahead of her is named Anne. As you might have noticed, none of them have last names that we know of, so as I'm sure you can guess, they're all going to live long and fruitful lives, as these four have finally been adopted by a man named Mr. Burrows, and they're being taken to his mansion by their teacher, Miss Mary. You know, it is kind of nice. You don't get that many stories about people's lives turning around for the better, but eh, here we go, they're, they've been adopted, and they're gonna live in a nice big mansion in the middle of these woods, all secluded from the rest of the world. I mean, it's kind of cloudy right now, but eh, it's not too bad. I mean, personally, I like a good rainstorm, so, yeah, you know, in the middle of the woods, it's all nice, it, it's pretty good. It's, good. it's a good life. It is kind of strange how one man can afford a mansion this big, but eh, he probably just has a good job. The commute is probably hell, but heh, that's his problem. Uh, okay, you know, there's a difference between being patient and having to put up with your slow walking, Mary? Y you could go a little faster, maybe? No? Well, that's kind of a theme in this game. Slow walking. Everyone walks slowly. Speaking of walking, you can press Y to get around, and when your cursor changes shape like that, that means you can interact with the world around you, such as talking to another human being. That is one of those interactions I hear about. You can also double tap Y to run, or you can press one of these shoulder buttons on the uh, SNES controller, but I don't think we can run at the moment. Do be aware that running does take some stamina, so be cautious of that. Uh, we can also bring up an inventory with the A button, though Jennifer doesn't actually have any items at the moment, so that's not got much use. The B button also has some use, but we're not going to be getting to that for a little while. You do have to talk to all these girls at least once, uh, but you do have to talk to Lot twice. Maybe it's because Jennifer and Lot are best buddies, because they don't fit in with the others. There's Anne and Laura over there, they're getting buddies, but Jennifer and Lot, nah, they're, they're in it together. They're buddies, they're pals. But even though that triggers the ability to move on with the game, might as well talk to the other people here, because they also have lines of dialogue. Did you see how slowly she walked? She's probably just taking a long time to get to him. That is a bit odd, I gotta admit. You'd think you would be here to greet us, I mean... These girls are his adopted daughters now, he should be right at the front door. Maybe he was taking a nap or something, but... Eh. Guess we have to go find them both now. Hope we don't get lost. Oh, hello, Spooky Wind. How's it going? Oh well, spooky wind or no spooky wind, we might- oh, oh, okay. Alright, um, that's odd. wonder why they turned off the lights, that, that's a bit of a weird thing to do. Well, we might as well go try to find them. I mean, we were in that hallway, so they couldn't have gotten very far. Let's see, there's the front door, and I guess there's the hall upstairs. Wonder what they were screaming about. Must be a bug or something. 
Ew, I bet it was a tick. Ticks are gross, but that's that's the danger of living in a forest. Okay, the front door is locked from the outside. That's a bit peculiar, but nothing to write home about. We'll just uh, keep moving on, I guess. I mean, gotta find them sometime. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not running, it's because Jennifer will not run if you interact with an object, so because I clicked on the stairs, she's going to walk to it, and she can't run to it as far as I know. Also, worth noting, uh, see Jennifer's portrait in the bottom there? That is actually her stamina. It goes from blue to green to orange to red. As I said before, walking can reduce that, as well as other things. But I'm sure we're not going to run into any other things, right? I mean, what else is there? Well, other than the aforementioned ticks. Ugh. Let me tell you about ticks. They, they are all gro- Oh! Okay, then. Well, um... Mr. Barrows might be rich, but, um... That, uh, he, he might want to get that looked at, because, uh, that is a serious safety hazard. Oh my, what if, what if somebody walked over that? They could have been killed. Jennifer could have been killed, really. I'm gonna have to go complain to him about that. I mean, I know he lives here alone, but that doesn't give him good reason to neglect the state of his home. He really should be keeping this place in check. I mean, I guess one wouldn't really think that any of your walkways would collapse like that, but... Uh, it must have shown signs, right? Did it creak or something? Oddly enough, it's also completely missing. We don't see the debris from that. That is a bit weird, but eh, again, nothing, nothing terrible. Nothing terrible at all. So, did anybody get, end up in, uh... I'm starting to think Mr. Barrows isn't nearly as rich as he says he is. Or at the very least, he doesn't like repairman of any sort. Well, if we could get out there, there's a courtyard outside. Maybe they all went out there. I don't know. I don't know how this place is laid out. I just got here. So I might as well start exploring. As slowly as possible, too, because I don't want I don't want Jennifer get, to get tired. She does get tired very easily. You know, this would have been a much better waiting room. It's got a little coffee table, it's got a TV, it's got a bizarre painting over there. I suppose we might as well just lounge around. I mean, the walkway back there broke, and they probably went that way, so I don't think we're gonna... Okay, TV's busted, too. Man, does anything work here? I have already started on a list of complaints. I mean, Jennifer should have some appreciation for the man who took her in, but at the same time... These are some pretty poor living conditions, I gotta say. I mean, no TV and a very real chance of being killed? Not really how I want my home to be. Who knows, though, maybe Jennifer likes living on the edge. Almost falling to her death? M maybe she appreciated that. She's never been a daredevil before, but she finally gets the chance. She does bring up a good point. I don't think I've seen a clock here. I mean, there was that clock tower, but that thing wasn't working. Ah, oh, well, I suppose time's not important. Just need to search around for our friends, wherever the hell they are. Well, this is the bedroom, and Mary nor Barrows seem to be here, so I guess they must have left. What could possibly be going on here, other than this bizarre, creepy picture? Uh, what do you know? Barrows uses the same brand of perfume that our teacher does. Isn't that great? Okay, that's not right. I don't think that's supposed to happen. So, uh, let's just get the hell out of here, and we'll reflect on that later. Actually, back up for a sec. Okay, Jennifer, I know you were almost murdered by your reflection, but I just noticed that Mr. Barrows has a pet parrot here. 
I hope he didn't name it Polly, because, eh, I mean... If he's not good at keeping his mansion intact, I hope he's at least creative. But hey, we might as well interact with our parrot, right? It's our new pet now. Uh, hmm. Okay, either he hates me, he wants to kick me, or he wants to kill me. I can't tell which, but he does seem quite vicious. Okay, this, this is seriously annoying. Jennifer, I would not take that if I were you. Seriously, this guy's mean. I mean, I know you're Mr. Bars' pet, but we really gotta do something about you. We're gonna be living together for now on, so you know what? You should ca you should calm down, whatever your name is. There we go. That takes care of that. That, uh... uh oh, um... <clears throat> oh dear, I think we might have, um, accidentally murdered it. Well, if Mr. Barrows asks, either say it was self-defense, or Anne did it. Either one's fine, just don't admit to your guilt, Jennifer. Okay, so let's see if we can find... Oh, water's running. Uh, I guess someone decided to take a shower. Well, if we're going with a ticks theory, that would make sense. I mean, he did, he definitely want to shower after that. Jennifer seems particularly distressed at the moment, and honestly, I, I can't blame her. It's kind of creepy in here. The lights are bad. No surprise there, but, um... No one seems to be responding. Uh, I know this is rude, but is there anyone in... Oh! Oh, my. Oh. Um. <clears throat> well, uh... I think it's safe to say that this isn't good. And say hello to Scissorman, the main villain of the game. Hey, lady. How's it going? I just finished murdering this girl, but then some blood got on me, so I realized I needed a bath. So, uh, I guess I gotta kill you now. Also, make sure to mash the run button to the right when this happens, because I have a tendency to get killed there. Like, a lot. Jennifer does not seem to like to move. I told you, she's a daredevil. She will turn around and stare her potential killer straight in the face before running away like, you know, a smart person would. Okay, so, uh, I don't know how this mansion is set up, so let's just go left. Left will eventually bring us somewhere. It's got to. It's statistically correct, because there is somewhere to the left. There is no way, any possibility, that there is an absolute nothingness to our left. And see, we're, we're in the garage, and we can go up this ladder, yeah! And... Eat it, nerd. Right, so we'll just stand there while he walks around. Well, uh, he doesn't know how to put a ladder up, right? Because if he doesn't, I think we're in the clear. Look at that, he's leaving. Whew, thank goodness for that. Well, that was a close one. Ah, oh, poor Laura. I don't know who that guy was, but... Ugh, that could be... Oh... Now that's not even fair! Okay, so definitely press right as fast as you can there, or you're going to die. Thankfully, for some reason, he stays up there, and once you get out of the garage, that's actually the end of this chase sequence, so, uh... We're safe. But, uh, why don't we go back for a second? I mean, uh... Maybe we could avoid that? Possibly? Okay, so instead of going in there, we'll just go to the left and avoid that guy altogether. Oh dear. Oh, that was priceless stained glass! Also, Anne's dead! Why'd you have to kill her? It's either one or the other with you, isn't it? Right, so now you have to run through here, but I'd actually suggest running right back through the door, because, uh, if you go down this hall, unless you come from the right side, Scissor Man will always spawn from that side. So, uh, I mean, it does allow you to go back through this door and escape him completely in a kind of silly manner, but 
At the same time, if you don't see it coming and you run to the right, yeah, that that definitely scared me the first time, let me tell you. Because I knew about this trick, but I didn't know why it worked. It always works because Scissor Man always comes from the right, even if you come from the shower room. Also, Anne's body seems to have been removed. Uh, I guess maybe maybe that's the reason why Scissor Man isn't here. He decided to clean up her body. How nice. Or maybe not. Maybe it's used for nefarious purposes. Kind of a mean little trick right here. The camera won't pan to the left until you try to open that door when you're being chased. Which is kind of mean, because it's like, oh, hey, you have to check the locked door before going here. To get to the other side here, you'll notice that the window will flash. Rapidly press the B button. That is called panic mode. When you're in panic, press the B button a whole lot and everything will turn out A-OK. -okay. Well, I thought I saw you going here, but I guess not. Are you sure you're not in here, lady? Okay, I'll take it for your word. Bye. And that's another way to end the encounter with the Scissor Man, though this one doesn't have the risk of him immediately coming back. Now, there is actually one more thing we can do down in the first hallway. Now, those first two deaths I've referred to as primary deaths because you technically have to run into them, and they're also the trigger point for the first Scissor Man chase, and, well, there is actually one more primary death out here in the courtyard. In order to access the courtyard, all you need to do is just use this rock and make a hole in the wall. Somehow, I don't think Barrows is going to mind. I mean, does he see the giant pile of garbage right next to it? And out here we have the courtyard. It's a nice little spot. Got a nice pool, but of course... You're expecting to see Lot, right? No, Anne actually has two primary deaths. She is basically the easiest character to kill. I really feel sorry for the poor girl, but, uh... She just... she's not good at living, I guess. Hey, Jennifer. I'm a fish now. I'm flopping about. Do I look cute, Jennifer? Well, that crack would be a good way to get away from Scissor Man, but unfortunately he's standing right in our way. But that doesn't matter. We panic mode. And after a quick struggle with him, we push him over like the dork he is. Eat it, no, uh, God damn it, Jennifer. That was actually a bit risky because once you're at red stamina, you are very at risk of being killed on the spot, so that was a bit risky. And this crack right here is just an instant way to get away from danger. It's a very nice evasion point. One last evasion point that you can get here, which isn't nearly as useful as some of the other evasion points, is in the bedroom. Now, the reason this one isn't really that good is it does require a bit of setup. Now, you can hide under this bed. However, if you didn't murder the parrot, then, uh... He will actually point out where your location is. Apparently it's not an instant kill though, even though Scissor Man goes over and stabs the bed. I, I don't know how Jennifer survives, I guess she just gets out in the nick of time, but... You do have to preemptively take care of the bird, which is why this isn't a good evasion point. Areas like the storage room are much better. Speaking of the storage room, we're back here. Let's just pick up a few items that might be useful, such as this rope and the insecticide over here. Now, you can't actually use insecticide to throw at Scissor Man. However, you will have to get out of the room because, well, it's insecticide. It will kill you. And, of course, since I am at red stamina, yeah, Jennifer would probably just drop over immediately because she's not doing too well at the moment. When you're not in panic mode, Jennifer can't climb over the shelf. I guess that adrenaline really helps out there, though. I do wish she would have gotten the contents of that crate over there, you know, before coming back over here, but I guess that wasn't on her list of things to do.
Once you're not in panic, you can just run over here and grab one of the other necessary items. Now, almost all the endings in the game require you to get two items, the perfume that we already grabbed, and this black robe. Now, there are actually a lot of randomized things in this game, however, these two are not some of them. The perfume, the black robe, and the rooms that they're in will always stay in the same location, so you can always find them fairly easily. Also, if you stand still for a while, Jennifer will actually drop to her knees and rest for a bit. Uh, I actually cut out a lot of this. She does not recover stamina this quickly normally. I just... it, it would take a while if I, uh, if I decide to just sit around normally. But after a few minutes, you can just get right back up and hey, you're ready to take on the day again. Now, speaking of randomized items, there is actually one randomized item we have come across, and that's the West Wing key. There is another location for the West Wing key, other than that box in the living room. See this nest up here? After you look at the nest, if you go over to this box, you'll push it over. Jennifer doesn't normally like doing things unless she sort of knows what to do with them, like back in the storage room, you can't push the box over to the shelf until you've seen that you can't get past the shelf. But if you weren't able to pick up the West Wing key back in the uh, living room, then it will be in this nest, which apparently Jennifer does not approve of. It is full of eggs and junk and also a key. And with that, we got the West Wing key, which is definitely a necessary item because we can't get to the West Wing without it. And the West Wing, of course, is a pretty important location, actually. It's going to be where we spend most of the game. However, I think that's that for now. We'll go to the West Wing for the time being, but, uh, what if we go back to the garage when we're not being chased by Scissor Man? Well, we can look around, and, uh, there is a car over there. I wonder if there's a key somewhere around here. Ah, perfect! The key's right here! Well, I mean, I'm sorry to leave everyone else behind, but, um... There is kind of a murderer in the house, and, quite frankly, I'm pretty sure most seminars in schools say that you shouldn't stick around in a house when there's a killer with a giant pair of scissors after you. At the very least, it just seems like the right idea, you know? If any of Jennifer's sisters are still alive, then she will have some hesitation about leaving. This version of Jennifer has only seen the death of one of her friends, so of course she is very hesitant, but if you keep persisting... Eventually, she will get in the car and just fucking drive through the garage, no problems whatsoever. And I'm going to speed up the credits because they're slow as hell. At the very least, that works. Unfortunately, Anne and Lot are gonna have to be left behind, but hey, we gotta do whatever we can to save our own skins. And in the end, we're A-OK. -okay. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, so let's try that again. Um, instead of leaving only one of them dead, why don't we witness another death? In this case, if you have two of them dead, Jennifer, at this time, manages to return to the orphanage. Okay, so this time we're good. I mean, understandably, that, uh, uh, god damn it all. Okay, so that didn't work out either. Let's just rewind all the way back to the beginning, okay? We're gonna make this work. There's a car here, we're, we've gotta get out of here. You get that ending no matter what. As long as you've seen two or more of Jennifer's sisters dead, you will get that car ending. So, what if there's one more ending? What if there was one other thing you could do in order to get to that car? Well, there is, actually. 
there's one little exploit you can do. This is referred to as glitched ending D. As you can see, if we go through the courtyard, there's actually a fairly good chance that N will not appear if you don't go to the living room first. Uh, this is referred to as glitched ending D, by the way, because it appears as ending D if you don't already have that ending. And by utilizing that little oversight where N won't appear, if we get into the car, Yes, I have to play the Wario Land 4 theme every time I get that ending. It's a habit, okay?